So let, let's uh, uh, maybe just briefly uh, recap where we are, right? So what we are doing and where we are headed, right? So that, that's something which I want to uh, get started with today, right? So, so if you recall uh, what we uh, discussed uh, at the beginning to motivate the need for uh, you know like uh, this course itself right so so if we consider a a dynamic system or a plant uh, to which we provide an input uh, u of t and we obtain an output uh, y of t so uh, let us say you know like i want to regulate the output of the system right so to a desired value right so for example let's say the temperature of air in this room right so we give what is called as a reference input okay so the reference input uh, tells us you know like what is the desired value of uh, y of t okay so that's what uh, we have right and uh, then what we do is the following we essentially look at uh, the output sense it give it as uh, a feedback and then like we compare uh, with uh, what we want with what we have right and then we get an error <coughs> let's say we denote by e of t and this error is passed through a controller Uh, which then calculates the in control input okay then we call this input as a control input okay so this becomes what is called as a control input because like once the controller calculates what is the uh, input that is provided to the system uh, the input to the system is uh, called as the uh, control input right so uh, this is what we are uh, our uh, 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 what to say overall objective of this course is concerned right so we want to learn how to design this closed loop uh, feedback system control system right so that like we can regulate uh, the output of the system to whatever uh, value we want okay this is what is called as an output regulation problem okay so that's what we want to do uh, in this particular course okay and that's the uh, concept uh, uh, and the corresponding theory is what we want to learn right and uh, what are we doing right so uh, right now okay so right now wh where we are is the following we are in the system block okay so the class of systems that we are considering are the class of system uh, systems is CISO uh, linear time invariant uh, causal uh, dynamic systems okay Okay, once again, I, I'm just uh, recapping the big picture because like uh, uh, after the, uh, these many lectures, you know, we have to see where we are, right? So that's, that's my objective to begin with this discussion today, right? So we, we are dealing with the uh, CISO LTA causal dynamic systems, okay? That's the class of systems that we are going to look at. And uh, uh, we are going to study these systems by using uh, a class of models, right? That that we call as a lump parameter uh, okay a uh, dynamic okay uh, deterministic at least in this course right so deterministic right continuous time models okay continuous time mathematical okay so that's what we want to uh, use to study right these systems study the response of these systems of course one may ask the question hey, hey is this class of system uh, a very small system in the whole space of dynamic systems of course it is right so that is it, it is a small subset right but nonetheless it's a very useful subset okay so we could we can see that uh, in practice, you know, like uh, in many engineering applications that involves uh, dynamic systems, you know, like uh, 
we would try to visualize a process or a practical system uh, through this prism okay of uh, CISO uh, not not only CISO we can have MIMO but uh, linear time invariant causal dynamic systems okay so that's something which uh, we will see that happens very frequently okay so it's a very useful uh, what to say framework to learn okay and uh, we essentially uh, approximate the systems response using this class of mathematical models this takes the form uh, typically takes the form of uh, linear ODEs with uh, constant coefficients okay so that's why uh, you know like all this time you know like we have been uh, looking at uh, linear or ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients it, because it so turns out that you know like if I study this class of systems using this class of mathematical models by and large the representation uh, comes out as a linear ODE with constant coefficients okay that is the uh, theory. Then what, we, what did we do once we had this you know like we applied the Laplace transform to obtain the uh, what to say transfer function representation okay. So that is what uh, we have done till now then we have looked at uh, uh, properties of characteristics of the transfer function like what are the poles of the transfer function what are the zeros of the transfer function and then like what are the implications of poles and zeros right so that is something which we have looked at right. So uh, as far as transfer functions are concerned you know like we had poles and then we had uh, zeros we saw that poles are uh, what to say directly uh, co correlated to the stability of the system right what we uh, the notion of stability that we are following till now is what is called as bounded input bounded output stability right. So uh, the location of poles uh, is, is directly tied to Bibo stability right for Bibo stability we want all poles to be in the left of complex plane right so that is the idea and uh, zeros essentially affect the dynamic response right so that is something which we have okay and we looked at uh, no, what are called non minimum phase zeros and their effects when they will come in and so on right yesterday okay so that is where we are right. So uh, as far as this particular course is concerned we are still here okay then what we will do is that like we will uh, 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 go to controller block okay by next uh, week in a few one maybe two or three classes we will look at what are the potential choices for this controller block. And then like we would learn how to put them together and design okay so that is going to be the entire course right. So then once we learn the design tools we will apply it to uh, practical problems you know like uh, we will uh, start working out uh, case studies and when you go to the lab you will you will see how it is applied to real systems right so yeah. And then we will learn uh, what is the overall use of the theory that we are learning in this course how it can be used in practice and uh, then what is the impact right so uh, we will get the big picture right uh, towards the end of this course. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. So, uh, so if I want to uh, uh, have an equivalent block diagram of course uh, here uh, we also looked at the fact that you know like I can have a sensor dynamics coming in we also have actuator dynamics coming in right we can have disturbances uh, being uh, what to say uh, applied to the system right and so on. Okay, so all these factors can come into the system display, right. So the same block diagram, uh, this is what is called as uh, essentially a closed loop control system uh, with uh, negative feedback, right. So once again, I'm just recapping whatever we have already uh, discussed. Okay, so now. Once we have this right, uh, so if you want to draw a similar block diagram okay in uh, uh, once uh, we want to essentially analyze these blocks with the corresponding transfer functions right and we want to draw a similar block diagram uh, once we transform to the complex domain or the S domain from the time domain how do we do that okay. So that is something which I am going to discuss now then we will go to performance analysis right. So if I want to draw a similar diagram let us say we go to the complex domain right I am going to draw this essentially uh, the same elements. So the plant transfer function let us say we call it as P of s okay. So the input uh, control input uh, let us say we call it as uh, U of s uh, and then like output we call as Y of s okay. 
and uh, the Laplace transform of the reference input let us say we call it as R of s right and uh, let us say you know like we have some mapping in the feedback path okay without loss of generality. So, let us say you know like I put a mapping in the feedback path which we call as H of s right. So, if H of s is 1 you you the what you have what is called as unity feedback right. So, we discuss what is called as unity feedback and non unity feedback I am going to come to that once again right. Let me draw this diagram what does H of s indicate H of s is just a visualization of any mapping that uh, comes in the feedback path ok. Uh, then uh, let us say you know like we call this uh, error uh, Laplace transform the error as E of s let us say we call the function that comes to the summing junction as W of s because sometimes you know like uh, if H of s is not 1 let us say I put a filter in the feedback path to filter out the sensors noise and so on right the output signal is anyway modified the modified signal let us call the transform signal is called W of s right. So, uh, let us say you know like I pass this error uh, through a controller block let us say I call the controller transfer function as C of s and then I go here ok for the time being let us say we neglect uh, actuator uh, dynamics and so on ok. So, let us say this is my uh, corresponding uh, block diagram in the complex domain right the same visualization. So, let us see where we are headed with this right. So, I hope it is it is clear how we got this two diagrams right I am just mapping it. A H of s is uh, yeah what I say indicative of any mapping that can happen in the feedback path ok like uh, let, let me uh, uh, write the explanation ok it is the feedback path uh, transfer function. See, uh, let me give an example, right? So let us say, you know, like I have a system, right? And uh, let us say, you know, like I have some sensor to measure the output. Okay, let's say the sensor signal is noisy. Before feeding it back, I may I may put a low pass filter. The low pass filter may have some transfer function, right? That I embed as H of s if it's important. Okay, the question we need to ask ourselves is that, like, is that important for us to consider, right? Then we put it. Okay, in some applications, okay, it depends on how you visualize. Okay, so in some applications, let's say you know, like I want to control the displacement of an object, but the sensor I have measures the speed. If I want to get the displacement, I need to integrate. Then what I can do is that I can say my output is speed, okay, to be consistent with my uh, sensor measurement, and in the feedback path I integrate. So if I integrate, the H of s happens to be one by s. So then I put one by s as H of s. You can do it anywhere, right? So it's just a matter of uh, what to say visualization, right? So H of s indicates any mapping that you can have in the uh, dynamic mapping you can have in the uh, feedback path. Okay. So if H of s is one, we call as unity feedback. Okay. So we should be familiar with all these terms. Okay. If in any problem, if I say consider unity feedback, that means that H of s is one. Okay, that that transfer function becomes one. Okay, so non obviously if H of s is not one, uh, it is called uh, non-unity feedback. All right, I'm sure this uh, terminology is clear. Right? Okay. Fine. Okay. Now uh, let's do some simple algebra here. You know, like please stop me once again if there are any questions. Okay. So, let us do some simple algebra here ok. So, uh, the uh, the advantage with uh, going to the complex domain and drawing this block diagram is that uh, if you take the output of any block see for example, let us say we consider this plant block ok the output signal at the uh, plant block is capital Y of s right and that is going to be uh, the product of the block transfer function times the input to the block. Okay, the input signal to the block is capital U of s. Okay, you take that, you multiply with the corresponding block transfer function, you will get the output signal. Okay, so that's the uh, convenience we get, right? Once we get, go to this uh, uh, representation. Okay, so obviously y of s is going to be p times u of s, right? What is u of s then? 
U of S is the output coming from the controller block. It is going to be the controller transfer function times the input to the controller block. So, we are going to have it as C of S times E of S, right. And then what is E of S? Let me, let me just uh, change the order of multiplication, okay, C of S, P of S. I can do it because like I am working with uh, scalar signals, right. So, these are scalar valued functions, so I can just swap the order. If you work with MIMO systems, you need to be careful, okay, because these will be matrices, okay. So, in general, if you have two matrices A and B, A times B is not equal to B times A, right. Matrices uh, uh, do not commute in general, right, in as far as multiplication is concerned, we need to be careful, right, okay. So, C times P of S, uh, what is E of S now? R of S minus W of S, okay. Uh, I am just writing in the same stretch, okay. So, this implies that uh, Y of S is going to be equal to C of S, P of S times R of S, okay, minus C of S, P of S, what is W of S? Uh, H of S times Y of S, right, do you agree, okay. So, what usually okay, G of S is defined as C of S times P of S, okay. That is the, what we call as G of S is essentially the uh, uh, product of all the uh, transfer functions that come in the forward path, okay. This is the forward path, right. So, essentially whatever comes in the uh, forward path, you take all the transfer functions and then multiply them, that is just a notation, okay, just a definition, right. So, let us say we call this as G of S, what happens here? So, you get Y of S to be equal to uh, uh, G of S R of S minus uh, G of S H of S times Y of S, correct. So, you see that Y of S is common on both sides. So, you take it to the other side. So, you will get 1 plus uh, G of S H of S Y of S is equal to G of S times R of S, right. So, this implies that Y of S divided by R of S is going to be equal to G of S divided by 1 plus G of S H of S, oops, how did I do, yeah, okay. So, this is what is called as the closed loop transfer function, okay. Why is it called as a closed loop transfer function? Suppose, you know like uh, I, I draw a big block, okay, around this all which encloses all these elements, right. Okay, so, I am just drawing a big block which essentially encloses all the elements in the closed loop, right. So, what happens is that like I get a block, I am just redrawing the block here, okay. And what is the input to the block? R of S, right, correct. What is the output from the block? Y of S, right. And what is the transfer function that we have got? This G of S divided by? 1 plus G of S H of S, okay. So, now you understand why it is called as a closed loop transfer function, right. It, you encompass all the elements in the closed loop system using one block, okay, with R of S being the input to the block and Y of S being the output, G of S by 1 plus G of H S becomes the transfer function. Yes. Ah, we will come there, okay, we will discuss that point, okay. So, uh, let me repeat his question. Uh, so, we are assuming 0 initial conditions, right, when we uh, deal with the transfer function representation, right, on all locations, right. Question is that how is it going to affect the response, okay, we, will, we are going to come to that question, okay, yes. Ah, yeah, so if you have a MIMO system, okay, like I am just, I, I wanted to alert you regarding that fact. Suppose if you had a MIMO system, like let us just do an aside, 
right. So, just to uh, convey uh, what happens. Uh, so, let me scroll up ok. Suppose, if you had a memo system right. Uh, so, uh, what will happen is that all these elements will become vectors and matrices ok. Like I am using a tilde to uh, uh, represent a vector and a matrix. Suppose, y is a vector, y of s will be a vector right and let us say u is also a vector, u of s will be a vector once again. Then what you will have is that you will have a transfer function matrix ok. Let us say you have 3 inputs and 2 outputs, you will have a 2 by 3 matrix for the transfer function. So, the transfer function will no longer be a scalar valued function, it will be a matrix valued function of s ok. It will still be a function of x a s, but then the uh, mapping will be will be giving you a matrix. So, the moment you have a matrix, let us say uh, you are u of s, you write it as c of s times e of s, uh, what did I do, right, oh sorry, yeah e of s. Then if you substitute it here, what will happen is that you will get p of s, uh, c of s times e of s, ok. I just wanted to alert you to the fact that you can't write in this case p and c are matrices, right. I can just uh, swap the order, that is why that is why I just want to alert you, ok. Here in many textbooks you will see you know like uh, this is written in this manner, so that you you go along the path, right. But the order of multiplication matters when you go to the memo system, right. See here you can observe what, what I did, right. I wrote p and c, I, I just swapped it to c of s, p of s here, right, in this step. I did not do it in that is just a convention, right. So, you can keep it p and p of s times c of s, right. So, that is also ok, right. So, uh, see the reason I did it is because like c of s times p of s means you multiply as you go along, right, this path, ok. That was the intention, right. So, you could have kept it p of s times c of s. But what I wanted to alert you there is that if you have a memo system, obviously this is not in general equal to c of s, uh, p of s, e of s, right you can do that, you can just arbitrarily uh, commute matrices right during multiplication that is exactly what I wanted to do, is it fine, yeah. So, uh, so this is the closed loop transfer function ok, so that is what is called as a closed loop transfer function. Uh, so, uh, uh, I hope this, this is pretty simple right, so uh, uh, this uh, uh, I think definition should be clear to us. Now, the poles of the closed loop transfer function. So, I am just uh, going to abbreviate the closed loop transfer function as CLTF ok, just for you know like not keeping on writing closed loop transfer function all the time, I am just going to put CLTF as an abbreviation ok. So, the closed loop transfer function are called closed loop ports ok. fine and obviously the zeros of the closed loop transfer function are called closed loop zeros <coughs> okay right these are some terms so how do you calculate the closed loop transfer function uh, sorry closed loop poles once again uh, you know like you give me any transfer function, poles are the roots of the denominator polynomial period ok, there is no confusion in that. So, what is the denominator polynomial in the closed loop transfer function? You look at the denominator, what do you have? 1 plus g of s h of s right. So, if you want to calculate the closed loop poles, we just solve 1 plus uh, g of s h of s equals 0. This is what is called as the closed loop a characteristic equation ok. So, we should remember all these terms uh, because we are going to use them uh, repeatedly ok, Charac uh, characteristic ok, uh, characteristic equation ok, ok. So, this is what is called as a closed loop characteristic equation, uh, why is it significant? The roots of this equation are the closed loop poles and why am I interested in closed loop poles because when I design a closed loop system obviously first the closed loop system has to be stable right 
See, when will the closed loop system be stable? When all the closed loop poles lie in the left of complex plane. You know, that's why we are interested in closed loop poles, right? So, and uh, the polynomial one plus g of s h of s is uh, called as the closed loop characteristic polynomial. Okay, so that is what it is called as okay, closed loop characteristic uh, polynomial. Okay, so that is 1 plus g of s h of s. So, the roots of the closed loop characteristic polynomial are the closed loop poles. Okay, so, please remember these terms. 